Hi, this is Ellen from The Chili Dog, and today I'm going to show you how to do a suspended bind off on a ribbed sock cuff. I'm finishing up a pair of toe up socks and I'm ready to bind off my work. I want to make sure that the cuff is going to be stretchy enough to pull over my foot when I'm wearing it and also to prevent the edge from digging into my leg. So I'm using a suspended bind off instead of a regular one. My cuff is a basic 2x2 two two ribbing and I'm going to continue working in the stitch pattern that's already established as I bind my work off. So first I'm going to work my first two stitches of the cuff and my first stitch here is a purl and my next stitch is a knit and the difference between a suspended bind off and a, and a regular one is that as you're passing the first stitch over the second normally you would just drop that passed over stitch over the end and just leave it this time we're going to hold it on our left needle after passing it over so you pass the first stitch over the second and you leave it there on your needle. So then just work the next stitch and then pull both strands off the left needle. And the one thing that's really important to remember as you're doing a suspended bind off, you need to position your working yarn so that you're ready to make the next stitch before you pass your stitch over because you won't be able to move the working yarn back and forth after that stitch is passed and held on the left needle. So my next stitch is a purl, so I'm going to bring my working yarn forward, then I'm going to slip that next stitch, the first stitch over, the second, and leave it on my left needle, and then I'm going to purl my next stitch, Drop both strands off my left needle, pass a stitch over, purl my next stitch, drop both strands off the left needle, and then since my next stitch is a knit, I need to move my yarn back, pass my stitch over, leave it on the left needle, knit, Drop both stitches off the left, pass over, leaving it on my left needle, knit, and then drop both strands off the left needle. Bring it forward, and then I would just continue in the same manner until I got all the way to the end of the round. And when you reach the end of the round, you need to do something just a little bit different than normal. So on this sock, I've purled off all the way around my work, and I'm to my last stitches. And really, typically all I would need to do is just pass the stitch over and then finish off my work. However, if I do that, there's going to be a gap there in the height of the bind off, and it's pretty noticeable. So one way you can kind of conceal that gap a little bit is simply by lifting up one stitch that's already been bound off. So you're going to look at the edge of your sock and you want the first two strands that are bound off that you can put your needle under. So now I'm going to continue with the suspended bind off. I'm going to lift my strand over leaving it on the left needle, and then I'm just going to knit into those two strands that I got from the bound off edge, and it's a little bit tight, but that's okay. And then once I've knit through there, I'm just going to drop the two strands off my left needle, pull the first stitch over the second, and now it's a lot more even there. You don't have that big gap in height. So then you can just pull the remaining yarn through and just finish off your work. And 
in the height there, like I said, is a lot less noticeable in the bind off. And then you would just conceal your work by tucking it in at the end. And as you can see, this is a nice stretchy bind off, so it's going to be able to go over my foot and not dig into my leg, which will be much more comfortable. So I hope you have enjoyed learning about the suspended bind off and we'll give it a try in your next project. And until next time, happy knitting.